just kind of the punishment that they're going to get for their lack of knowledge because they've rejected knowledge. And I think that's important, right? Not just lack of knowledge, but the fact that they reject knowledge. Um, God rejects them and they forgot the law of God, which is really important. Again, we talk about the commandments all the time and the importance of keeping it. And if you don't, then you're going to see the punishment that comes through the rest of those verses. And you reject God. So again, God rejecting you, right? Good. Anthony, I don't know, brother, you, you missed the start of this. So the reading uh, Derek was going over, uh, and it's, it's from the book Hosea, the prophet Hosea chapter four. And he read to us, I believe, uh, chapter four, one through nine, right? Uh, I think 10, but yeah, basically. 10, one through 10. One through 10. Uh, did you get that, Anthony? Not sure. I see him up there. I just don't know if he's got a good connection or not. All right, we'll keep going. Yeah, I mean, uh, the Lord talks about in the Bible uh, being rejected and uh, Actually, to reject someone, think about this, to reject someone, you have to be aware of that person, right? Or to reject something, you have to be aware of that thing. Uh, you can't reject something unless you know it's pursuing you, right? So we have to look at that from a standpoint that God has revealed his truth, but even though the truth goes out and it pursues us, we reject it or we run from it. And in that, God rejects us or a nation of people. Uh, good, good, good reading, son. I appreciate the reading. Again, Hosea 4, 1 through 10. Let's, let's, let's look at what God is talking about since uh, Derek brought that up. And then we'll get to the Bible study. We'll pray and get to the Bible study. Let's look at uh, Deuteronomy 4. And let's, let's look at what, what the prophet is telling the nation of people that are supposed to be following God. And why he's saying uh, what he's saying. We have to go back to Deuteronomy when God first formed uh, a people, a nation of people uh, represented by Israel, uh, same as in the New Testament, represented by the new church. Uh, let's look at, again, uh, 4, chapter 4. And we'll start in uh, 1. Now, therefore, hearken, O Israel, unto the statute and the judgments, which I teach you, Moses talking, for to do them that ye may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God your fathers gives you. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish out from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the, of the Lord your God, which I command you. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Belpor. For all the men that followed Belpor, the Lord thy God has destroyed them from among you. But ye that did cleave unto the Lord your God are alive, every one of you this day. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye should do so. That's, a, that's the key there, not just hear, but do so in the land where ye go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom. What is the wisdom? keeping the judgments, the statutes, and the commandments of God, and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what nation is there so great who hath God so nigh unto them as the Lord our God is all things that we call upon him for? And what nation is there so great that has statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day. Amen? So we see that Derek read to us Hosea 4, 1 through 4, Hosea 4, 1 through 10, and we see God being rejected, and the thing that, that Moses just 
said to us in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy, excuse me, 4, 1 through 8, if they were to keep the statutes and the judgments and the commandments of God, then they were going to be blessed in the land. That was the covenant. But as we see Derek reading to us in Hosea, they didn't do it. It wasn't the first time they didn't do it. This was just one of many prophets that was sent to the body of God, the people of God, uh, Israel. And they rejected it. Not only did they keep it, but they rejected it. So now we're putting Deuteronomy and what Moses told them with what they rejected. Amen. So we see God is being just because the justice is righteous, righteous, righteousness and the fact that he blessed them for keeping the covenant and he rejected them for breaking the covenant. Amen. Everybody see that? All right. You caught up with us, Anthony? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I got a little, I didn't have a little light, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm you tracking, tracking. All right, all right, good. I just want to make sure you get those verses. That's going to be Hosea 4, 1 through 10. That was the reading today. And then we supported what Derek read to us uh, with Deuteronomy 4, 1 through 8. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you that we're able to come together again today, Lord, in your word and your truth. We ask that, uh, Everything that we hear, uh, everything that we read, Lord, uh, comes from your spirit, Lord, and not from uh, the people reading. Uh, and we ask that you open our ears and you open our eyes and give us understanding of the things that you would have us to know and the truth that you would have us to walk with as we go forth from uh, this Bible study and go out into the world. Help us to be disciples for your truth and for your kingdom and for your son and, and, and bless us with the Holy Spirit. That keep us us as we go, Lord. And these things we pray in your name, Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. Yeah. All right. We start. We, we started the Bible study last week with when a nation has gone too far. And just a quick review. We talked about the one of the first things we talked about was in Genesis uh, uh, 19, 1 through twenty nine. Uh, we supported uh, Genesis eighteen eighteen twenty one. Actually, my wife is in the process of typing this up, so I'm going to give you the whole outline, God willing, uh, sometimes tonight or early tomorrow. Uh, I promised you all that this weekend. I didn't get it to you. My, my fault. I, pro I apologize that I didn't get it to you, but I'm going to, I'm going to make sure you get it by this weekend. Uh, we, we talked about Sodom and Gomorrah. We saw God himself come down in Genesis and see what was going on with the people. And when he, what he saw was... Uh, not what he created us to be in Sodom and Gomorrah. And he judged them righteously. He judged them, but he pulled out what we call today in the church a remnant. And we'll see that not from just Genesis, but all the way through in uh, Israel. When the Assyrian king takes out Israel, we'll see a remnant return. Uh, when Nebuchadnezzar takes out Judah, we see a remnant return. Uh, we see a remnant that escaped in uh, 70 AD when Titus uh, took out Jerusalem, uh, Titus, the general Titus, by his father's orders. Uh, we saw a remnant even after that. Jesus had already been crucified at that point. And in the last dispensation right now, uh, we're in grace, but we'll see a remnant also because in Revelations we see uh, the Holy Spirit talk to us in reference to that same remnant. And, uh, and just since we're reviewing, let's look at that real close. So you'll see what I'm talking about as we go through here. Uh, let's go to the book of Revelations real quick. And we'll look at that word remnant. We also last week, remember, saw 10, the that 10% in there, and we, we also identified that also within the remnant. So I just want to carry that theme through this Bible study of the remnant. I think it's going to be, I wasn't prepared for that, but I'm going to go there anyway. So we see the remnant, if you go to Revelations 14, and we'll just go straight to 12, here's the patience of the saints, here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. 
there's going to be a few people, even in the last days, still doing those two things, keeping the commandments of God, which Derek read to us, which we also read in Deuteronomy, which Moses said was part of the covenant. Hosea mentions it, Jeremiah mentions it, Isaiah mentions it all through, all through the Bible, we see it. But we see also in the last church, a remnant. And of course, we know the remnant to be the saints, those that have been sanctified and set aside for the purpose of the kingdom. And we see here again in 12, here's the patience of the saint, here are they that keep the commandments of God in the faith of Jesus. But before that, we're going to see the word remnant when we talk about Satan and who Satan was coming after. So let's look that up real quick. I don't have my study people here, but it's in 17. Uh, it's going to be in 1217. And the dragon was wroth with a woman. We know the woman is the church, uh, spiritually. We know the woman was married physically and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. And what are they doing? Which kept the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So we see this same theme all the way through scripture. Amen. I just want to show you that not, not just in Genesis. It was a remnant that came out, which was Lot and his daughters. His wife came out too, but she turned because her heart went back to Sodom. So only a remnant escaped. And we can also go to Noah and see Noah and his sons and their wives and Noah's wife, which were eight that were on the ark, which was a remnant of the people during Noah's time. Amen. The Bible's consistent all the way through. So I want to show you that remnant, it's only going to be a remnant. In Isaiah's time, when we go back to Isaiah here in a minute, we're going to see a remnant also that's returned from Babylon uh, to rebuild the temple. I think Anthony said something about rebuilding the temple last week. Uh, so it's been consistent that everybody ain't serving the true God. Amen. Hey, David. Uh, and, and there's going to be a deception in the world. And a lot of people even that are going to religious services and to, to what we call church are, are, are being deceived because they're not doing these two things. All right? They're, they're not keeping the testimony of Jesus Christ. What is the testimony of Jesus Christ? Anybody? And it's a trick question, but... I, I'm just curious if anybody's going to be able to answer it. Hey, Dave. Uh, okay. The, the testimony of Jesus Christ is from Genesis 1 all the way to Revelation 22. Right? That, that's the testimony of Jesus Christ because from the beginning to the end, Jesus said the whole thing is about who? It's about it's me. Fine. About him. He said it's all about me. That's his testimony, and that's testimonies unto what? Our salvation, right? Without the blood, no, no, no sacrifice, no salvation, amen? No, no, no blood. People will say, well, Freddie, you talk a lot about uh, obedience. Yes, because the Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice, so I got to talk about obedience, but I can't talk about obedience until we get to the blood, right? Sacrifice. Right. So I just want to show you the remnant all the way through scripture. We talked about the remnant in Genesis uh, with Sodom and Gomorrah. We're, we're going to see the remnant in Isaiah. We're going to see the remnant in Jeremiah. We're going to see the remnant again show up in the New Testament in Jerusalem when Jesus gives his testimony about leaving, getting coming out of her. We see only a remnant. Those were the Christians that left uh, Jerusalem. All, of, all the ones that were still under the Jewish law were killed, basically. So I just want to give you that. Uh, David, just so you can catch up, the reading today was Hosea 4, 1 through 10. And we supported that with Deuteronomy 4, 1 through 8. That was the reading. Hosea 4, 1 through 10, and Deuteronomy uh, 4, 1 through 8. Amen? So now we're back to when a nation has gone too far. Did Sodom go too far? No. Huh? What do you think? Did Sodom go too far? Well, of course. I mean, that, that, uh, that, 
and and uh, you know, and and the laws, the natural laws were there. Had 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 there been an exodus from from uh, from 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 Egypt and the Ten Commandments? No, but the natural laws was there. God God created man, and 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 He gave him guidelines on how to live. Right. You know. Uh, yes. You know. I, I mean. He, he from the very beginning he said that there'd be no God uh, other than me. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so they took it upon themselves with with everything that they were doing to defy. You know, they let's 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 certify that, Anthony. Let, let me ask a question by an answer question at the same time I ask it. Did Adam have the law? Rose had, says yes. Rose says yes. Anybody else? David says yes. What did you say, Anthony? Yeah, something better than the law. He had God. Yeah, but, but within that was the word, and the word became flesh. So he had the law, right? We can all agree that he had the law. And let me show you, he, he had the law. Did Satan have the law? Yes. Satan knew the law. Yes. Satan had like, the law. Like like any like any good attorney. He, he knew how to twist the words of yes, the law. Yes, sir. And so we know the law is the law is like God. The law is a characteristic of God Himself, and God is eternal. So the law is eternal. And just like just like Jesus said when when He was tempted by Satan, man does not live by bread alone, but on every word of God. Amen. So we we know that they had the law. So I'm agreeing with you. There's no excuse for Sodom. So we're gonna. We're going to fast forward. Sodom is destroyed. Remember, Abraham is, is in the process of begging. He knows what happened to Sodom. He, he, Lot is there. He, he sees this as he's becoming the father of Israel, right? Uh, so Abraham passed all this down through his, his bloodline. Uh, that's where the church came from, out of Abraham, basically, the people of God. So we see this, and then we got into a little bit. We got into uh, Isaiah 1, 19 through 31, and I think we finished at Isaiah 19 uh, through 31. Amen? Let's look at that real quick. Let's go there uh, just for a quick review. And we can pick up there, and we can get going today. Now you said Isaiah. Isaiah 19 uh, through 31 is where we, we, we ended up. First, uh, I mean, chapter 19 of verse 19. Uh, uh, where did I go? Where am I at? One. A prophecy. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Isaiah 1, 19 through 31. All right. Isaiah 1, 19 through 31. My bad. Hey. Uh, and we, we just real quick, uh, we'll just read a little bit of that uh, so we can kind of familiarize ourselves where we're at. Uh, and we'll start in 10 and we'll, we'll go a little bit in 10 and then we'll pick it up in uh, Isaiah 2, 5, 22. So Isaiah 10 starts with, hear the word of the Lord, ye rulers of Sodom. Give ear unto the law of our God, ye people of Gomorrah. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, said the Lord. I am full of your burnt offerings and rams and the fat of your fed beasts. And I delight not in the blood of bullocks and lambs or of he goats. When ye come to appear before me, who hath required this at your hand to tread my courts? Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and Sabbaths, not the Sabbath day, but Sabbaths. The calling of the assemblies I cannot away with. It is inequity, even the solemn meetings, your new moons and your appointed feasts. My soul hated. They are trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. And when ye spread forth your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Yea, when ye make many prayers, I will not hear your hands are full of blood. Wash you make you clean put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes cease to do evil learn to do well seek judgment relieve the oppressed judge the fatherless plead for the widow 
And then 18, he says, come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. God wanting to reason with his people. Amen. God wanting to reason with his people then and God continuing to reason with us now through his word. He's asking the same thing. The problem is we don't study. Amen. We go to church. We hear one verse. A preacher tells you uh, about his father, about his mother, and uh, about his Cadillac and his Mercedes. And then we go to Luby's. We don't study. So it's kind of hard for uh, the good Lord to reason with us. Because how does he reason with us? Through his word. And if we don't know his word, how can he reason with us? Right? So he's, he's asking Israel the same thing he's asking us as a church today. Hey, let's, let's sit down and just talk about this. If you are part of the covenant, there's requirements, and you won't know what that requirement is unless you read the Bible, right? Unless you study scripture. And that same requirement is, as it was as, as we agreed to for Satan, for Adam, for Eve, all the way through the Bible, God's, God's the same today, yesterday, and forever. God says in his word, the same thing that I called yesterday, I called to today, and everything that I call for today, I'm calling tomorrow. Same God. Amen? He hasn't changed. So we have to understand what it is he wants us to obey. Amen? There's something you got to obey. He doesn't say obedience is better than sacrifice and then don't give you anything to obey, right? Uh, I'm a father. There are certain rules in my house. And if my kids did well, they were blessed. If they didn't do well, they were judged and punishment came, right? Sure, sure. Uh, what more so is a holy, righteous God going to judge his servants? So, we're looking at these nations that came before America, the nation that we live in, and before the Protestant church, the churches that we came out of, so that we can get an idea of what these nations did that put them in a position to reject the true God. Amen? Not religion, because a lot of people still go to church, but they reject God. Right? Uh, a lot of people have religion they have denominationalism. They believe in their Baptist church or their Methodist church or their Presbyterian church or their Catholic church. But do they re really believe in obeying the word of God? That's what we're trying to get. Amen. Because as a nation, that's in order for God to fix this nation, it's going to happen through men and women like us. Amen. The Bible says if my people will humble themselves, that's us. If we would humble themselves, right, and pray to me, right, kneel and pray to me. Kneeling means in a position of giving authority to him, right? I'm relenting my own self-authority, and I'm giving him authority over me. That's what I'm bowing my head and kneeling for. And then he asked me to pray. I can't even know how to pray unless I read scripture, amen, unless I know how he wants me to pray to him. But once I do pray to him, he says he'll hear from heaven and he'll hear, heal our land, amen, as from the Bible. So we're getting the same thing here. Let's reason, Israel. So let's see what Israel does. Let's go to uh, Isaiah 2, 5 through 22. Isaiah 2, 5 through 22. That's basically the whole uh, chapter 2 of Isaiah. Someone want to read? Okay, go ahead, Bryce. Oh, house of Jacob, come ye and let us walk in the light of the Lord. House, uh, chapter 2? Oh, you start five. Go ahead. Five, huh? Yeah, you're good. And therefore thou hast forsaken thy people, the house of Jacob, because they have replenished from the east, and are soothsayers like the Philistines. And they please themselves in the children of strangers. Their land is also, is also is full of silver and gold, Neither is there any end of their treasures. Their land is also full of horses. Neither is there any end of the chariot. Their land is also full of idols. They worship the work of their own hands. 
that which their own fingers have made. And the mean man boweth down, and the great man humbleth himself, therefore forgive him not. Enter into the rock, and hide thee in the dust, for the fear of the Lord and the glory of his majesty. The lofty looks of man shall be humbled, and the haughtiness of man shall be bowed down, and the Lord shall alone be exalted in that day. For the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty, and upon everyone that is lifted up, and he shall be brought low. And upon all the cedars of Lebanon that are high and lifted up, and upon all the oaks of Bashan, and upon all the high mountains, and all upon all the hills that are lifted up, and upon every high tower, and upon every fenced wall, and upon all the ships of Tarsus, and upon all pleasant pictures, and the lo and the loftiness of man shall be bowed down, and the haughtiness of man shall be made low. The Lord alone shall be exalted in that day, and the idols he and the idols he shall utterly abolish, and they shall go into the holes of the rock, and into the caves of the earth, for fear of the Lord. And the glory of his majesty when he arises to shake care of the earth. In that day a man shall cast his idols of, of silver and his idols of gold, which they have made, one for himself to worship to the moles and the bats, to go into the clefts of the rocks and into the tops of the ragged rocks, for fear of the Lord and for the glory of God. When he arises to shake terribly the earth, cause ye for man whose breath is in his nostrils, cease ye for man whose breath is in his nostrils, for wherein is he to be counted of? Amen. Where is the man to be accounted of? Who puts the breath, breath in our nostrils? God. Amen. Thank you, David. Thank you, Bryce, for the reading. God, it's only because of God that I'm able to talk to you. Without breath, I can't talk to you. Without breath, I have no life. Without breath, you can't talk to me, and we can't have Bible study. Without breath, you're dead, and only God controls that breath. Amen? And that's what he's saying here at the bottom. Cease ye from, from man whose breath is in his nostrils. The men that he's talking about are these leaders of the so-called church. I call it false church. You're putting your faith in them. You're putting your faith in seminary. You're putting your faith in people that say, I got a doctorate in theology. But it's God that gives wisdom. I ain't never, I ain't never learned anything from theology in my life except how not to obey God. Just the same, right? So we have to go back to the source. The source is God, and we got to humble ourselves. I think he read several times in there, humble yourself, humble yourself, humble yourself. I said earlier, my people will humble themselves, he's telling us in the New Testament. But I want you to look at the things that, that Israel has a problem with. So he's talking to Jacob. Of course, Jacob and Israel are synonymous. Uh, God says he's the God of Jacob. And of course, he changed his name to Israel. But he says their land is full of silver and gold. Does that fit us here in America? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And not only is it full of silver and gold, but just look at what's going on right now with all these stimulus packages. Who's the people, who do they have their hands up to? God or to... Washington, D.C. Hmm? Think about it. D.C. for sure. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Waiting on it. Another stimulus. All right. Another stimulus. Amen. Bring it. I don't need God. I got D.C. Right? And I'm not picking on Biden, and I'm not, not, not against Biden, not against Trump. I'm just talking about putting man where God should be. Amen? Let's keep looking. So we see gold and silver, and neither is there any end of their treasures. That's America. Every two cars in every garage, some more than that. I can't complain. I, I got more than that. I'm, 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 I'm part of the problem. Amen. I'm not, I'm not criticizing anybody. I got, it goes out and it comes back to me too. But we, we have our own treasures. Their land also full of horses. Neither is there any end of their chariots. Military, right? You know, uh, America has one of the greatest militaries. We're not, you know, we're, we're not afraid of anybody because we're the baddest guys on the block, right? So is Israel because they had the power of God behind them, right? Everywhere they went, they conquered, right? It took down Jericho, which was a great city, right? Why? Because of the power and presence of God, right? But when God left it, we see in 70 AD, when God's presence left it and they caused the abomination that caused Jerusalem to be desolate, what did the Romans do to them? Totally annihilated them. 
destroy them. I was looking today, and, and uh, the Holy Spirit is amazing. Remember the Olympics in 1986? Some of y'all are at my age. Serial, Serial, 84. Remember those Olympics? 84, yeah. 84. You remember? Yeah. Those? yeah. Remember how beautiful they were? They said one of the best Olympics, one of the last Olympics that really made money, actually. I was looking at a bill today. You know what happened? That country was beautiful and they had this Olympic and this great display and everybody was just looking and just saying, wow, what a great country, what a great place. And all the events went well, the Olympics went well. You know what happened six years after? Civil War. They tore their self up from within inside their own self. Civil War. Six years later, it was desolate. The Olympic Village that they walked in with all the flags, remember in 84, and did the big uh, parade? It's a cemetery now. They ran out of places to bury people. Think about that. Six years after the display that they put on in the 84 Olympics. See how fast God can turn things around? I thought about that. <laughs> Not from without. Nobody came from without. It was from within. Civil War. And you know what it was? So why it was so violent? It was a religious war. <laughs> I just want to give you that. Right? It was a religious war. Different fra factions of religions. I'm not going to pick on any one of them, but destroyed the country. Amen? So we're in the same place. We, we are haughty. We got our gold. We got our military. We got all these things in America. And we're not calling on the true God anymore. And we don't have men at the front of the church and calling on the true God anymore the way we should. And then he says in eight, their land also is full of idols, right? Oh, I, 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 can't, I can't make it today. Uh, I'm going hunting. You know, oh, look at this trophy that I got on my wall, right? I can't, I can't go today to the football games today. We put football, the draft is Thursday. You know, if we had church on Thursday instead of Sunday where most people go to church, uh, I'm sure people would have missed because they have to see the draft or the Super Bowl. Idols, right? And I have my own idols. Uh, Dallas Cowboys used to be my idols. I, 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 as, as God changed me, uh, my whole attitude, people will say, well, did you see the Cowboys win today? Don't, don't mean nothing to me no more. Did you see the Cowboys lose? Don't hurt no more. It used to hurt, man. I'm, I, I was hurt. You know, don't talk to me about, they were my idols. I mean, come on, man. If my whole passion, if my whole attitude changed because of a win and a loss of a football team, who, was, who am I serving? Amen? The Bible says you can't serve God and mammon too. It, it would ruin your week. It'd ruin yeah. your day. And you'd, you'd be you'd be heartbroken over a football game. Amen. And how many how many souls did you win on that day? <laughs> I, I know I lost one. That was my own. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I know I didn't win any. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. we got to get back to that. It's important. God wants us to be the salt and light of the world, not only when our team wins, but also when our team loses. Amen. And we shouldn't be putting our teams up as idols. That's what Israel was doing, all right? The land is full of idols. They worship the work of their own hands. That's football. We, we, create, we created football, basketball, and all these other things, trophy hunting, uh, fishing, and all these other things we like doing. Verse 9, and the, and the mean men bowed down, and the great men humbleth himself. Therefore, forgive them not. The meanest thing you can do is put yourself in front of the church of God and teach false doctrine. And then bow down to that doctrine and have everyone that follows you do the same. That's what he's talking about here. Amen. That's mean because you're keep you're putting people in hell <laughs> instead of putting them in heaven. Amen. I can't put anybody anywhere, but I shouldn't be having people follow me to hell, right? So then we see 10, enter into the rock and hide thee in the dust. Who's the rock? God. All through the Bible, God's the rock. Amen? Enter into the rock. Enter into the truth. Enter into the word of God. And let that be a hedge around you. 
like the Spirit of God was a hedge around Israel. But we don't count for that to be a hedge. You know, I'm not bragging. I really am not. And I hope I'm not boasting and I'm not proud because God tells me not to be. But the plague hasn't come near my house. Amen. Uh, God has put a hedge around my house. But why? Not because of Washington or the, CD, the, the CDC. It's because the word of God. Amen. Okay, let's keep going. So the dust, my, my, I'm going to hide in the rock. The rock is, is Christ. The rock is the word of God. And then 11, the lofty looks of man shall be humble. Okay, those are those who are lofty. Well, I don't care what church you go to. I don't care what you say. I, I don't have to keep the commandments of God. Jesus hung those on a cross, right? We still hear that, right, in religion. Jesus here hung those on a cross. Let's, let's look, uh, I think it's, um, let's look real quick. I just want to clarify this. And you'll see me do this through the Bible study a lot because it's a big religious doctrine that you don't have to keep the commandments of God anymore. And Jesus somehow or another hung them on the cross. And I think it's in Luke 24. Let me let me go straight to if, if I can. I think it's Luke it's, uh, 22. Uh, it should be Luke 22. Is it Luke 20, 22, 20, 22, 24? 42, yeah, 22. I mean. 22. Help me out. I'm getting old. Maybe. I'll give it to you one second here. Maybe it is 24. Yeah, 24, 44. Yeah, 24, 44. Luke 24, 44. And, and, and if anybody ever comes to you and, and wants to challenge you on that, because... You know, hopefully this, this Bible study takes us to a point where we're all disciples, true disciples for God, teaching the truth of God. And we got to be able to dispel these things that religion has brought into the world. And this is one of the things they tell you. You don't have to keep the Sabbath anymore. Well, the Sabbath is the fourth commandment. And if God did away with the Ten Commandments, Jesus by through Jesus told us. But let's look and see what he says. Uh, 24... 44. 44. 44. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled. So he's telling you what was fulfilled, which are were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. So what had to be fulfilled? Did anybody say? Did anybody, did anybody hear me say the, the moral law or the commandments of God? Huh? Nope. No. It's clear. Jesus himself speaking. So when religion and seminary teaches you all grace and you don't have to do that anymore, you need to be on the high tower screaming out. And I tell people this. You might not know scripture. You might not understand scripture. But if you're going to be like a Noah and you're going to save your family... Do two things. Keep the testimony of Jesus Christ unto salvation and keep the commandments of God unto sanctification. That the, the, the commandments of God is your contract. It's your covenant. It makes you part of Israel. Amen? So highlight that and give yourself a mental note because a lot of times people will try to come against you when you tell them that the commandments are still a requirement. And Jesus himself is very clear in that that's not the case. Amen. So let's go back to Isaiah 22 and look at some of these things, because, again, I want to I want to take my time here because I want us to be able to take what Isaiah is saying all these years before Christ and apply them to us today as a nation, because God's going to judge every nation the same. And some of these are the issues. So the lofty looks of man shall be humbled and the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that, exalted in that day. The Lord, how do we exalt the Lord? The best way to exalt the Lord is through his word. Amen? Through his word. But we have to know his word, not false teaching, not false doctrine, the truth, which is his word. For the day of the Lord, that's actually what this ministry Day, this the ministry that y'all are part of now 
the day of the Lord is the title of the ministry because I always wanted to tell people what that day is going to be like because it ain't going to be a good day. Amen. And I was taught in my church it was going to be great and the angels were going to be singing and the church was going to be Okay, that's not what God says. For the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty and upon everyone that is lifted up and he shall be bought low. And upon all the cedars of Lebanon that are high and lifted up and upon all the oaks of Shen and upon all the high mountains, upon all the hills are, are lifted up and upon every high tower, upon every fence wall. Matter of fact, God says when he shows up, everything's going to be bought low. Why? Why do you think he's going to make everything low? Because men has bowed to these trees. Think about all these people. These trees in Lebanon were these beautiful trees. That's what they used to make uh, the, the, the first house of God with. Remember, they bought trees from Lebanon. And they were, they were, they were just humbled by these trees and humbling themselves to nature and things that were created by God instead of humbling themselves to God. Amen. These things that we see in the world is his creation, just like we're his creation. We don't bow down to no man. We bow down to God. We don't bow down to no mountain. We bow down to God. We don't bow down to no tree in Lebanon. We bow down to God. And these things that are made from trees and rock and all these other things are idols. And we, we say, well, we don't do that. Well, there is a church that does. Amen. And I just want to point it out. And upon all the ships of Tarshish, your Navy ain't going to save you. Your Army ain't going to save you. Your Air Force ain't going to save you. And the loftiness of men shall be bowed down. And the haughtiness of men shall be made low. And the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. Now you can forget about your doctrine. You can forget about your religion. You can forget all about all those other things. The only thing God's going to be concerned with is his word and his truth and that you obey it. Amen. Let's keep going. Let's go to uh, Isaiah 5, 117. Let's get another closer look. Isaiah's a prophet. He's coming to them. He's coming to them as a nation, just like we should be going to the nation and to the people that we love and to the people in our community and telling them that we have to humble ourselves and get back to the covenant of God. We should be telling our preachers that. We should be telling our, the people in our church that. We should be telling the people in our families that. The people in our house. You know, the Bible said Noah built an ark unto the salvation of his family. Amen? This is building an ark. Learning scripture is building an ark. Uh, 5, 1 through 17. Someone want to read? I'll read. Go ahead, David. Now will I sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. My well-beloved hath a vineyard and a very fruitful hill. And he fenced it and gathered out the stones thereof and planted it with the choicest vine and built a tower in the midst of it. And also made a wine press therein. And he looked that it should bring forth grapes and it brought forth wild grapes. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge, I pray you, betwixt me and my vineyard. What could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it. Wherefore, when I looked that it shall bring forth grapes, brought it forth wild grapes. And now go to, I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the hedge thereof, and it shall be eaten up, and break down the wall thereof. David, if you, would, David if you would, stop it at, after you read seven. Go, go to seven and stop there for a minute. Okay. And I'll lay it waste. It shall not be pruned nor digged, but there shall come up briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel and the men of Judah, his pleasant plant. And he looked for judgment, but behold oppression for righteousness, but behold a cry. Amen. Thank you, David. What is God talking about here through Isaiah the prophet? He makes it clear in the last verse, for the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel and the men of Judah has pleasant, his pleasant plant. And he looked for judgment, but behold, oppression for righteousness, but behold, a cry. What is he talking about? Uh, right. People uh, falling away, right? Braxton, people falling away. What'd you say, Anthony? Uh, how, how, they, how they were treating the, the, the people of their own nation. Mm. So, 
So he he was uh, talking about that that same thing that you brought up just a minute ago. Those that sit in high places, giving giving bad doctors and having Amen. people. Uh, Amen. That's why they're crying. What what's crying? You know, God. When you go to the Book of Revelation, there's a. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry. When you go to the Book of uh, of Enoch, I know it's not in our Bible anymore because the Catholic Church took it out, but it was part of the original manuscript. Uh, several of the books that were taken out. Uh, but if you read the book of Enoch, Enoch sees a spirit going back and forth to the, the, the throne of God, back and forth to the throne of God, back and forth to the throne of God. And Enoch wants to know, and the angel that's with him says, well, why are you concerned with that spirit? And Enoch says, I, wa I want to know wh what's the deal with the spirit. And you know what spirit that was? Yeah, that was Satan. No, that was Cain. That was the blood of Cain still crying up for righteousness, going back and forth to God saying, I was killed unrighteously. I mean, Abel. It was Abel. It was the spirit of Abel because Cain had killed him. So, so God, think about that. That was the beginning of a creation that that happened. But that spirit was still going back and forth from the grave to the throne of God and had access to say, I want judgment. That's pretty deep, ain't it? And we see here this cry that's going up are all these people that are dying under false religion. They thought they had good intentions. They thought they were doing the right thing, but they had bad doctrine. And that same cry that went up through for Abel is going up to every sheep that these shepherds lead wrongfully amen so let's look at it real quick what do you what do you, i want you to highlight something if you don't mind or write it down if you don't like highlighting in your bible i like highlighting in mine now i will sing to my well beloved understand that because we're going to come back to that in the new testament jesus quotes isaiah think about that the beloved here that he's referring to is Jesus. He ain't born yet. He says, now will I sing to my beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. You're the vineyard. You're the church. Jesus is the overseer of the vineyard. Amen. My well-beloved with a vineyard in a very fruitful hill. It's fruitful because God himself put himself in flesh and came as Jesus in the flesh, the Christ. And, and we should, knowing that we had a God that was willing to come in the flesh and show us how to live and obey in the flesh, what greater fruit could we have? Amen? Christ incarnate, Christ inside the body, I mean, God himself inside the body of the flesh, showing us how to do it right. Remember, this church didn't have that yet, but our church does. Amen? So we see, and he fenced it. What did he fence it with? I told you earlier. Truth. The word. That's that hedge that I tell you that's around us. He fenced it and gathered out the stones. <laughs> oh, if you have the word, you should be able to take the stones out yourself, right? False doctrine, right? You should be able to remove the same stones. Do the stones produce fruit? No. Okay. And planted it with a choicest vine, and he built a tower in the midst. Holy Spirit. Amen? Holy Spirit. New church has the Holy Spirit. If I have the Spirit, then I should be walk, able to walk in the Spirit and not in the flesh. Amen? Spirit. Okay? And so we see Jesus and the power of God doing all the things that anyone that would keep a vineyard would, would do if he wanted to produce fruit. But there's no fruit coming. Right from this nation, 
There's no fruit. Look at all the churches we have in America, almost 2 billion Christians. Where's the fruit? Huh? Where's the fruit? Where's the cry? Amen? No fruit. Is it God's fault? Or false doctrine? False doctrine. We, we don't want the truth. We don't want to walk straight. We don't want a straight path. Right? And now, O oh, inhabitants of Jerusalem, you, the church, and men of Judah, you, men, men, listen to me. He, he, he's, he's calling Adam, not Eve. I'm sorry. I know there's some women here. But he's calling Adam, right? You men of Judah. If the man won't stand up and take his rightful place, we ain't gonna ever get this thing right. Amen? You men of Judah, I pray you, betwixt me and my vineyard. Who, who's wrong? Christ or the church? Hmm? church? You see what I'm talking about? And think about this. When Jesus does come along, he has to say the same thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fast forward on your outline. You don't have it yet. Uh, my beautiful wife is typing it up. But I'm going to fast forward for you a little bit. And I'm going to get ahead a little bit. Because I want you to see Jesus saying the same thing to the new church. And he says it in all the Gospels. But let's look at it from... Uh, Let's look at it from uh, Mark 12. Go to Mark 12. And I'm fast forwarding. We're going to go back, but I just want to fast forward because I don't want to lose this opportunity. As we continue to study, I want you to see how Jesus was so much fulfilling the truth of God. Just like he said, just like I read to you earlier, 12, uh, 1 through 12. Somebody want to read? Actually, we can go through 13. I'll read. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I'm in the right place, right? Uh, no, 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 one. Okay. And he began to speak unto them by parables, right? A certain man planted a vineyard. Didn't we just hear that? And Isaiah? Certain man planted a vineyard and set a hedge about it. Didn't we just hear that? And dig a place for the wine vat and built a tower and let it out to husbandmen and went into the far country. And at the season, he sent the husbandman a servant that he might receive from the husbandmen of the fruit of the vineyard. And they caught him and beat him and sent him away empty. And again, he sent unto another servant and at him, they cast stones and wounded him in the head and sent him away shamefully handled. And again, he sent, and him they killed, and many others beat some and killed some. Having yet therefore one son, his well what? Beloved, what did I tell you about in, in uh, back to Isaiah 5? Now I will sing to my well what? Beloved. Same person. Beloved. He sent him also last unto them, saying, they will reverence my son and will reverence my son but those husbandmen said among themselves this is the heir come let us kill him and inheritance shall be ours i want the church for myself because i want an airplane i want a house on the east coast i want a house on the florida coast i want a house in texas i want a mercedes benz Let's kill Jesus and the testimony thereof, and let's make our own religion. I'm, I'm, I'm preaching now, but I'm going to get back to it. And they took him and killed him and cast him out of the vineyard. What shall therefore the Lord of the vineyard do? That's God. He will come and destroy the husbandman and will give the vineyard unto others. And have ye not read the scripture? The stone which the builders rejected has become the head of the corner. This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. You see what Jesus was talking about? Same thing Isaiah was talking about. Jesus is teaching in a parable. You know why they didn't know? They didn't study. They had to work. Isaiah had come. They had to work. 
Just like the church today, you're not going to know the Jesus that comes because you won't study the word. Same thing happened in Jerusalem. Amen? But let's go back and look at a couple of things. We know God, it's his vineyard. The church is his. Amen? We know the servants. Who are the servants? The prophets. Who, we, ain't, we ain't been killed yet physically or spiritually. The prophets, they went, right? God sent the prophets to tell them, hey, this is my church. These are my people, right? And what did they do to the prophets? They killed them. What did they do to the disciples? They killed them, right? So we didn't get to the disciples yet because first we were just dealing with the prophets. He killed them. Right? They kill the prophets. So then God says, well, you know what? I'm going to send my son. Who's that? Christ. They didn't listen to the prophets. They killed him. So I'm going to send my son. And what they do with him? They killed him. Hung him on a cross. The church. Amen? Church handed him over to Rome. Killed him. The same vineyard that was supposed to and the people in the vineyard that was keeping the vineyard, those are the priests and the preachers in your church today. That's who they represent. Back then, it was the rabbis, the Sadducees, and, and the Pharisees. Today, it's these so-called rabbis and deacons and, and pastors and, and, and reverends, right? Those are the ones that were supposed to be keeping the vineyard and sending the fruit back to God. You understand the parable now? You might have understood it already, but hopefully you understand it a little better now. And Jesus is telling them this parable because Isaiah has already said this to the people once back here in Isaiah 5. I just want to give you understanding. Amen. So we skipped ahead, but that's where we're going to go. Uh, but we're going to go back to Isaiah now. I just didn't want to miss that. I want you to see that in the New Testament and the Old Testament because people say, oh, that was Israel and Israel fell and got, well, now what you going to do with Jesus in the new church? Amen? You got to deal with the new church now, the New Testament. So I just want to give you that so you don't think this is a waste of time, what we're doing. Let's go to Isaiah 6, 1 through 13. Very important. I'll read. In the year that King Azza died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon the throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphim. Each one had six wings, which twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved, and the voice of him that cried in the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. <laughs> of mine eyes have seen the king of the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphim unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, has, this has touched my lips, and thine inequity is taken away, and thy sin is purged. Salvation from God. Not, not because of Isaiah, because of God. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? God's asking the church the same thing. He's asking us the same thing right now. Who shall I send? And, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me, Isaiah speaking. And he said, go and tell these people, hear ye indeed, but understand not. And see ye, but perceive not. Make the heart of these people fat and make their ears heavy. Shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. Then said I, Lord, how long? And he answered, until the cities be wasted without inhabitants and the house without man and the Land be utterly desolate, and the Lord have removed men far away, and there be a great forsaking in the midst of the land. Here we go. But yet in it shall be a tent, 
remnant, I told you, remnant, and it shall return and shall be eaten as a till tree and as an oak whose substance is in them when they cast their leaves. So the holy seed shall be the substance thereof. Amen. God speaking. Let me tell you, Isaiah is talking to his people. He's telling them, you have gotten away from the law of God. You have gotten away from the covenant of God. You have become idolaters. You're serving yourself. You're serving the things made of hands. I don't see much difference in what Isaiah is dealing with as what we're dealing with in America today. Does anybody? It's just as God was righteous and taking them out by the Assyrians, he's righteous and taking us out in any way he wants to take us out. But let's go back and look at what Isaiah said. Isaiah gets a vision. He sees heaven. He's worried because of the state of the church, the state of Israel, the state of his people. So he's thinking maybe God is no longer on the throne. But the first thing we see in, in, in 6 is God shearing up his position and his authority in heaven. Amen? Those are the first few verses we see. His train filled the temple, we see at the end of verse 1, meaning his glory is still the same. He's still God. He's still in control. Two, above it stood seraphims, one with six wings, and twain covered his face, and twain. And we understand God is still the same way he was when, when Moses asked him what he was. God said, I am a holy God, and you too are to be holy back in Deuteronomy Isaiah is reaffirming that when he says, the angel says, holy, holy, holy. God's character not changing. God's covenant not changing. Amen? Same God. And then we see uh, the whole earth is full of his glory still, meaning God is still in control. Even in America, where it doesn't look like he's in control, whose glory fills America? If it fills the whole world, then it fills America too. Amen? He's still in control. His glory is still in control. He will be lifted up in that day. And the post of the door moved. That just gives you basically uh, what we should be doing in the presence of God, like Isaiah, right? Uh, we should be moved when we read the word. We moved when we hear the word. If these posts were supposed to be stationary and they move, how can we not? And we're from God. Got his breath in our in our lungs, in our nostrils. And these posts are moved, but we're not. All right? Then five. Then said I, woe is me. Think about this, man. This is a prophet from God. This is Isaiah. And he looks at himself and understands when he is in the presence of God, how small he really is. Woe is me, for I am unclean. Think about that. I'm not Isaiah. I'm not talking to Isaiah as I talk to this group. But Isaiah knew he wasn't clean. How can I look at myself as being clean? And then he talks about his lips. What comes from your lips? Words. Words. Amen. Thank you, Braxton. Words. Right? This is a prophet of God saying that even from his lips, he's got some issues. So God fixes it. God takes a serpent has a serpent, takes a coal, the altar representing the altar of God. The sacrifice is a coal, puts it on the lips of Isaiah and cleanses Isaiah. He did that with his son with us on the cross. Amen. He cleansed me on the cross. And the only way I get a coal is when I repent. Amen. I I'm not saying you're not going to sin. You're in flesh. God knows you're going to sin. But if you refuse the coal, which is the cross, Whose fault is it? You die in your sin. Amen? You die in your own sin. I'm sorry? Yes. Your sin. Not God's fault. He, he's keeping, remember, he's got a hedge around his vineyard. You're the vineyard. And he said, laid it up on my mouth and laid it low, has it touched my lips. Wait, let's get to eight. Also, I heard a voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I sin? That's why this is not a preaching or a church ministry. This is a teaching ministry because we're trying to get disciples. I don't need somebody that wants to sit there and listen to me. God don't need me to sit there and listen to him. He needs people that want the truth, that are going to take the truth in. And when 
they feed someone, it's going to come from God, not them. Amen? Not from the seminary, not from your doctrine, from the word of God. Amen? And he said, go and tell these people, hear ye indeed, understand. Now, I want you to get this. We'll stop here and we'll pick it up next week. But I, I got to get you to get this. Make the heart of these people, verse 10, fat. Give them what they want. Fill them up with the, the goods of the land. Keep their bellies full. Keep their mind occupied on sports and all these other things. Pornography. Women gladly dressed. Amen. Uh, rap music. Amen. Country music. I ain't just picking on one group. I'm picking them all. Keep, keep them fat with all these other things so their focus won't be where it needs to be. Now, God's saying this to do that. That's why America is what America is. That's why you have your MTVs and your BETs, and that's why you have your MG studios and, and your rap music and all these other groups. God said to do it. Right? Why? Why? Because we've gone too far as a nation, just like Israel did. We're going too far. So now God's saying, wait a minute. They've gone too far. Make them fat. And then he says, make their ears heavy. <laughs> you can't hear nothing. I don't want you to hear the truth. I I'd rather you have itching ears, as the Bible says, and let all these men and women in the pulpit tell you what you want to hear, that you're all going to heaven and you're going to be raptured, right? Fat ears. Make their ears heavy and shut their eyes. Oh, you can't even see. You're blind. Hmm? Can't even see. Shut their eyes. At least they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand. You don't want you to understand now. You went too far. With their hearts and convert and be healed. What? What? Wouldn't you think the God that they teach us in religion wants you to convert and be healed? Huh? I was always taught, oh, God wants you to be healed. Here he's telling a whole nation of people, uh-uh, too late. Amen? Uh-uh, I don't want them to be healed. You went too far. Amen? You went too far. And then he goes down to the end here. How many coming back? Only a tenth. Think about it. Only a tenth is coming back. Only a few people are going to get it. Noah preached for 120 years along with his grandfather Methuselah. 120 years before the first raindrop hit. How many people listen? Just the ones that got on the boat. A remnant. Amen. A remnant. You know, you know yeah, we got, no, I'm not picking on David. I know he's got finals. But even David with finals showed up for this, lets me know the Holy Spirit is moving in that young man's life. Amen. He could have had every excuse not to be at this Bible study today, but he's here despite finals because finals will get you a job, but it won't get you to heaven. And all the job's going to do is get your ears fat and your eyes closed if you ain't got God with it. Amen? Uh -huh. Everybody good? I hate to end there because, you know, there's a couple of other sources coming. Uh, and when you're at the table of God, man, it's hard to back up from the table. I mean, me and Richard talk about that all the time. He just keep bringing another dish out and another dish out and another dish. And I just want to sit here and eat, man. I, 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 I'm like my man from the cowboy. I just want to eat, you know. But, uh, you know, I can't. I know I can't keep you all. It's the middle of the week, and I don't want to keep you all too long. So sometimes I go. Uh, oh, and just wait our copy of this outline. Yeah, yeah, I see you smiling. I know you're hungry, brother. I, I'm, I'm going to get you the menu here as soon as my wife. Hey. This is a good menu, too, man. This is a good menu, bro. You're going to be, you're going to have the food that you never hunger from anymore, and you're going to have the water that you never thirst from anymore. But it's going to be from this Bible. It ain't going to be from me. It's going to be through me. And I hope the same for each one of you. I pray that God makes disciples out of everybody at the sound of my voice, and we get truth in the world. We got to get truth Amen. back in the world. Amen. And it starts Amen. with us. Amen. But it right. goes in short chance meetings like the way me and you met. God had a plan. God always has a plan, bro. Like it said, what does it say? His glory fills the whole earth. 
That means you can't get away from it. Amen. It's just you got to be in tune to it, right? Amen. You got you got to tune out rap music. You got to tune off the football game in ESPN. You got to tune out church. No offense. I'm talking about false church. And you got to get to the word. We don't want to hear it anymore. Amen. All right, let's pray. Father God, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for your truth. We thank you for your word. We thank you that you're giving us understanding and walking us through your word, Lord, as a father would hold a hand of his young son, Lord, and just walk in uh, in the direction you would have him to go and you keep him safe, Lord. We ask that you do the same for everyone in the sound of my voice, Lord, that you walk us through your word, give us understanding and through understanding, give us wisdom, help us to walk in the way you would have us to walk, Lord, in the light and not in the darkness, Lord. Help us to learn from the past churches, Lord, and help us to know that you are the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And the things you called on the churches in the past, you're going to call on this church, Lord. Help us to be the remnant, help us to be the tenth, and help us to save our family as Noah saved his, Lord. And we just give you all the praise and all the glory and honor. In your name, Jesus, we pray these things. Amen. Amen. Uh, I'm typing that out. I promise you guys I'll get that out to you before the weekend. Amen. And we skipped along. So when you see the outline, it's going to look different. I just felt the spirit moving me to, to the New Testament just because I wanted to give you understanding of uh, this particular passage. A lot of people read the Bible all the way through, but they don't understand that Jesus' parable even though people didn't have understanding, they should have had understanding if they studied. Amen? So I don't want to get us caught up in the same thing. Amen? Everybody good? All right, my brothers. Hey, y'all be blessed, man. Take care. Love you guys. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thanks. Good night, David.